Hey, if you struggled with Southern sausage, gravy, and biscuits, well, you've come to the right place, my friends. On today's episode, we are gonna do sausage and gravy. We're gonna do it on a Blackstone. You could do this in the house. You do not need a Blackstone. If you wanna do it in the house, same principle. And we're gonna make some homemade biscuits. So not long ago, I made biscuits in my pizza oven and people were saying, Hussy, we need biscuits and gravy from you. My thoughts were, let's do it. So the first and crucial part about biscuits and gravy, biscuits and sausage gravy is the biscuits. The biscuits is number one. Well, I've been getting some flack lately, y'all. And it's okay. I did some frozen biscuits one time. People were like, oh, that's not right. I've did a few episodes with some biscuits in it and also been getting some flack for Hussy, your biscuits are thin. I can't win for losing y'all. So today we're gonna make some thick biscuits. I'm talking thicker than a snicker. And we're gonna do them on the Blackstone griddle. I've been trying to get my biscuit game. I've been upping it a little bit, all right? Been watching my girl, Brenda Gant, and she does it just like my mama, just like my grandma would make it. So I have a bucket or a bowl of, this is self-rising flour, okay? Self-rising. It's already got the baking powder, already got all that leavening agents, already got it in there. So you don't even need to do any of it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this part by hand, all right? I'm gonna make a well. This is probably like two pounds of self-rising flour. And then we're just gonna use a little bit of Crisco, all right? This was kind of crazy, is, is you really don't even measure. So this is about an egg shape of Crisco. One egg shape, two egg shape. I'm gonna add just a little bit more, okay? And just like that, you put that into your well. Now, comes a buttermilk. Buttermilk, shake it like a Polaroid picture. All right, full fat buttermilk, state law. Probably should have opened this before, but whatever. All right, full fat buttermilk. And there's no measurement here either. You just kind of fill the well up and then that's it. So I think it's about a cup of buttermilk. Take your old grubby hands and you just come in. The objective here is to get the buttermilk incorporated with the Crisco, okay? And the heat of your hand helps that. And what's the crazy thing is, is that buttermilk don't go anywhere. It just stays, just stays where it's at. I do want to thank Brenda Gant for showing me this on one of her videos. She didn't show it to me personally, but I watched her videos. She reminds me of my mama a lot. My mom's no longer with me for those that don't know. Just the way she cooks. She does a lot of things just by hand. She don't measure a thing hardly, especially with these biscuits. If you can see, we don't have hardly any more lumps of that Crisco. So what I've done is I've incorporated the Crisco into the buttermilk and that's gonna be into your flour. So whenever it bakes, it's gonna be nice and fluffy. It's gonna be nice and moist, all right? So after I do that, I'm just gonna kinda of take, this is your spoon, and I'm just gonna start working flour into your buttermilk and your Crisco. Y'all feel free, feel free to use a canned biscuit. Feel free to use a frozen biscuit. I got some beef, honestly, because people gave me slack about using frozen biscuits. I don't know what somebody's gonna give me slack about this about, but I'm sure it's coming. You don't wanna mess with it too much, you'll get a, you'll get a dense biscuit, okay? You just wanna get it incorporated enough. While you're doing this, y'all, get your Blackstone. You wanna get it pre-warmed to about low. I got it on low right now, and we're gonna cook these straight onto the Blackstone. See how that's nice and supple? Perfect. Now, I'm just gonna take my hands, transfer it right here. I'm gonna be like my mama, I'm gonna be like her sisters, be like Brenda Gant. This is my biscuit bowl. And I just put this in a cool, dry area. Now, so we got our biscuit dough right here. Let me try to get some of this off my fingers. This is actually a cleaning scraper, but I also like to use it to uh, a bench scraper too. They go really well. So I like to come in, just fold everything in. There we go. Boy, that thing is nice and supple. Let me go wash my hands, I'll be right back. My hands are nasty, Jake. My hands are nasty. All right, woo! I got some clean hands now, clean hands. I wanna thank one of my members, Dan M. He saw me using that little <laughs> roller for my biscuits, and he said, Hussy, I'm gonna send you a nice roller. It has these nice guides on it so that I can get them, get them thick and it can be kind of even. So I appreciate you, Dan, for helping me out, brother. Look at this, pretty cool. Got those guides on it, just like I was talking about on that one video. Awesome, awesome. I got some good members. Got some good, just good fans in general. I appreciate y'all. They are training wheels. That's exactly right. But Biscuitville, and I think they said that uh, Bojangles has the same thing. So they use them too, Jacob. So don't, don't 
trash talk me, Jacob. We want a thick biscuit here because Jacob said he likes thick biscuits. People want thick biscuits, all right? And apparently I just haven't been doing a very good job. So we're not gonna go too small here. Got this, this right here is just an all-purpose flour here, y'all, just to make sure we don't get any stickage, okay? And we're just gonna keep this nice and thick, just like that. We're not gonna do much. All right, now, take our biscuit cutter. Gotta dip this into some flour so it, so it cuts nice, okay? Just like that, just like that. Can I get in there, right there? Oh yeah, oh yeah. What we're left with here is a nice, nice, tender biscuit right there. Look at that. We got our biscuits, we got them rolled out. Now, we're gonna put them over onto the black stone, all right? All right, we're gonna get our biscuits going here, guys. We're gonna put a little bit of oil down. This is just a little avocado olive oil blend that I get. This is California brand. We're gonna put a light coat of that down. We're gonna get each one of our biscuits. We're gonna leave them kind of close to one another. This right here helps them to rise a little bit also. After we get all the biscuits down, we're gonna put our large cover over those and we're gonna let these cook for about three to four minutes and then we're gonna flip them and check on them on the other side. All right, y'all, it's sausage time. Our biscuits run a little later than usual. I uh, ran out of propane, didn't realize it. I don't know why I ran out of propane, but I did. So uh, all good though, all good. We're gonna get our sausage ready for our sausage gravy. And I see a lot of folks struggle with sausage gravy. And this is how we do it in the South, all right? So buckle up, buttercups. So I got one pound of sausage. This is old country sausage. This right here happens to be Bright Leaf brand. After you put your sausage down on a griddle, just make sure it's kind of nice and hot. Uh, I would say about a low, low to medium heat. Chop that up and just keep on just flipping it, chopping it up to, the, to your desired liking. Some people like their crumbles a little bit bigger than others, but just do it to your liking. After your sausage kind of looks just like this right here, we're gonna transfer that over to a pan. We got our sausage crumbles ready. Now, let's check on our biscuits. Pull the cover off of these bad boys. Ooh, doggies. They look good, they look good. So there we are. We're gonna add just a little bit, just a smidge, just a tear more of oil here, just to help cook that other side. And y'all, if it looks dry, even when you put them down for the first time, add you a little bit of oil, it's fine. You can use butter too if you want. So we got our sausage here. Well, I'm just gonna be honest with you. There's not enough fat here to make a nice roux. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna supplement. For every tablespoon of fat, you need a tablespoon of flour. You get about a cup of gravy or so, maybe a little bit more out of each one. So you need a fair amount of fat to go along with your flour and your milk. All right, I'll put down about a little bit over a tablespoon of butter. That's just gonna help our flour to make our root. Now we're gonna add about a couple tablespoons of flour. All right, now we're gonna cook this flour. This is a, a really nice tip here, y'all. And this is how some people, they, they don't cook the flour out. And that's why it has a flour taste to it. Once your biscuits are nice and brown, just like this right here, we're gonna transfer those over to a plate. We're gonna bring them over to our cutting board. And we're just gonna put a nice towel, just a clean towel over it. This helps trap that steam in, helps keep them fluffy, helps keep them awesome. We want to get back over to our roux here, y'all. You want to make sure you cook that flour out. Uh, it doesn't have the rawness. You can also try a piece of this to make sure. I know just because I've done it for a while, we're good to go. All we have to do now is add our liquid. Depends on what you want to do. Some people will do half and half. Some people will do whole milk. Some people do 2%. Just use whatever milk you want. This happens to be just uh, whole milk, the red cap. Once you see that start, kind of coming together and we add some more milk. We're gonna let the pan just kind of set, let it cook for about maybe two minutes, maybe let this kind of come together. It's kind of loose right now, but it will come together here soon. Right now is a good time to taste and see if by chance, you know, you might need to add some salt, a little bit of pepper. Mm. Oh man, that's good. I feel like it needs a little bit of pepper. Going to do a little bit of salt. It's kind of tightened up on us a little bit. So what do we do? Just add a little bit of milk. It's just as simple as that, y'all. All right, now we're gonna get this off the black stone. We're gonna bring it over to our cutting board. Ooh, doggies. Boy, that is pretty right there. All right, so our biscuits, our gravy, it's done. Now it is time 
to give these a try. I mean, look at these biscuits. They're nice, they're fluffy, they're moist, they're thick, like me. All they need now is a little bit of gravy on it. Hey, I wouldn't mind having a little gravy on myself sometimes, you know what I'm saying? All right, I'm gonna lay that down just like that. I tell you what, ain't nothing better. Waking up in the morning, having a little sausage and gravy biscuits. Nothing better. Let's give it a try, y'all. I like that exterior of that biscuit. I like it, it's got a, it's got a little bit of a, a little bit of substance to it. Cheers, y'all. Mmm. Mmm. That sausage gravy is amazing. The biscuit on the outside has a little bit of a, a little bit of hardness to it, which I like. Man, that's good. That great, that sausage really has a good flavor. Hey, with these tips, I promise you're gonna be a sausage and gravy expert, just like the great Southern cooks out there. Hey, I appreciate you sticking around. Hey, check out this video right here. I promise you'll enjoy it too.